This is a quick video tutorial on how to use Cantorum in Dorico. Cantorum is a text font that allows you to input plain chant notation. It's really designed to be used in Dorico, although I guess you could use it other places as well, but that's really where it's, uh, where it's meant to be used and that's where it shines. Um, you can do all sorts of things uh, with, with Cantorum. You can input examples like I've shown here. It's also possible to combine plain chant with conventional notation, like this. And the goal here is for it to be used in a simple way, easily learned, easily understood, uh, and something that you don't have to fool around with a lot. Um, and it's really meant to work with Dorico and take advantage of Dorico's powerful note spacing tools. So let's take a look at how this works. I've started with a blank file. Let me go through some of the settings and explain some of them to you. First, in setup mode, I created a player called Chant. The way I did that was um, I created a, or I, I, I added a voice player, um, and then I went here to Edit Instrument Definition. Um, I, I used this button here, New Variant from Selection, and I created this instrument called Four Line Chant. There's all sorts of things you could do here. The really important part that you need to know is the number of staff lines is four. And I've also set it to use an invisible clef. Um, so that's how I got this. Secondly, I've set my rhythmic grid to quarter notes, and you'll really see why in a second. We'll take a look at layout options. In layout options, my page size is set to letter. Of course, it could be whatever, whatever you want. The important thing here is that I've set the space size to be eight points which might seem a little large, but that's actually pretty standard. It really matches what most modern uh, typesetting of plain chant tends to do. Uh, then I've set my note spacing to be three. Um, that's flexible. That could, be, uh, that could be other things as well. In engraving options, let's look at a couple settings there. Under spacing gaps, uh, I've set a couple of these spacing gaps to be zero. Um, and you can play around with that. You can use whatever is whatever is easiest to you. Um, but I've set those to be zero. Let's look it up at lyrics. Uh, in lyrics, I've set all my alignment to left. Now, minimum distance from the staff, I've set this to zero spaces, and you'll see the result of that in a minute. Uh, what that's going to do is that's going to place my baseline for my neums um, actually aligned with uh, with the top staff. Um, let's look. Let's look a second at bar lines. Uh, in bar lines, I've set my dash length for dashed bar lines to zero, and I'll explain why later on. That just allows you to input an invisible bar line. It's a dashed bar line that appears as invisible, and that'll give you some more options for spacing um, at the end of the line if you wish. Next, let's look at text. Um, under text, um, position of text relative to other items. It's pretty important to set this to use default position. The reason for this is that while, while um, Cantorum allows you to do pretty much everything that you need to do natively, uh, Chant is very complex and there, there might be times where you'll need to use a text item and drag it into place. And you don't want to use the avoid collisions feature, so that hopefully won't come up very much. Next, let's, ta uh, let's talk about paragraph styles. Under paragraph styles, um, First, we'll look at uh, uh, lyrics. I've set my lyrics and my chorus lyrics uh, to Minion Pro. I've set this to eight point staff relative with a staff size, with a space size of eight points. That would be a staff size of, of, um, of 24 points. Um, that, that works out to a text size, an absolute size of about 13 points which seemed right, but you can play with that as well. You could also set it to absolute if you wish and set a fixed size. Then we'll look at uh, lyrics chorus translation. This is the, the, the lyrics line that I recommend using for Cantorum. And you want to set this to 20 points and staff relative. Um, that's really important. And then the final thing, I've created a couple paragraph styles here. Cantorum first letter is this, Cantorum prefatory is this little information here, and those are all available baked into the page template, which you can use if you wish. But what I really recommend is making a paragraph style called Cantorum. You're just going to create new here, you're going to create this and make it 20 points staff relative. 
All right, let's actually do some uh, some inputting of, of notes, lyrics, and neums. So um, I have this set currently so that uh, players and multibar rests, show bar rests, empty bars is, is turned off. So since the clef is invisible and there's no meter, there's really nothing to click on at the moment, so how could you input notes? You actually can't. Um, and let's click on this guy, and then we'll go Shift N. Now let's put in some quarter notes. How many should you put in? Well, each quarter note represents a horizontal position. One quarter note is going to be for the clef, one quarter note for each of the neum clusters or the lyric syllables, and one quarter note for the custos at the end. You could look at your chant and sort of count up how many quarter notes you'll need. You could always add more later if you wished. I'll just do I'll just do a few for now. Uh, let's start here. Uh, use the function select more, command shift A or control shift A, uh, to select all of these. And then in engrave mode, let's switch over here, hide stem, hide note head. So now these are these are going to be completely invisible. You can see them as little shadows, which is helpful to see where they are, but they're not going to show up in the score. Uh, we'll also turn uh, turn signposts off for now. So should you input lyrics or neums first? Well, it really depends. If you have something that's very very melismatic, where you're going to have where you're going to have maybe a cluster of neums at various locations and fewer lyrics, you might want to do the neums first. But if it's very simple and it's pretty much one to one, uh, let's start with lyrics first. So I'm going to go to the second note, Shift L. Uh, and then I'm going to press up once for the chorus, and now I'm going to type uh, my lyrics. That'll work for now. Uh, these, of course, are not aligned with the first uh, the first capital letter. Don't worry about that. Uh, now let's let's put in a couple nums. So you could go here or here; it doesn't matter. Let's we'll go back to the note. Shift L, up once for chorus. Shift up. Now we're entering it above the staff, and now uh, Alt down arrow or Option down arrow gives you the translation line, and this is the line that we've assigned in paragraph styles that, in which we're going to enter the neums. Now, when you first enter a neum, let's put in a neum at position one, and hit Escape. You see that by default it's up here at the top of the staff. That's because these lyrics are entered above; they're not going to be down on the staff unless we force them. So we'll switch to engrave mode. And, uh, and we're just going to move this downward until this is aligned at the bottom here. And you can do that by using Control-Alt or Command-Option, down, down, down. Uh, and the reason for that is because each of these movements, these large movements now, corresponds is going to correspond with one uh, space size. So this is now correctly aligned. So now when we enter nooms, um, you can see that they're all going to be perfectly lined up on the staff as they should be. Uh, let's go back and uh, let's actually put in uh, a clef. So we're going to go here, let's go back one. Now the way that you input notes or items, most items, that are not simple, uh, simple puncta, is you have to enter first the y value. Um, so this first line is 1, the space is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8 is the is the space above, 9 is a ledger line, and 10 is the is above the ledger line. You can also go also go back down to let's do let's try this 0, um, m1 for minus 1, and m2 for minus 2. So those are your positions on the staff. So let's go back one and we're going to enter in the clef this way. We're going to make a do clef uh, and we're going to make this on um, on this third line up, this is position five. So we're gonna go five, comma, capital D. When we do that, boom, we have a do clef exactly where it should be, and it's spaced, uh, it's lined up exactly right, because if you remember, in spacing gaps, uh, we set our spacing gaps here to be zero. So we don't have to realign that portion of it. All right, so those are some basics. Um, by the way, we could enter some diff different clefs as well. We could make this uh, an F clef. Um, so there's, there's the F clef. Um, or we could make it uh, we could make it a do uh, clef with a flat. That's this one. Or we could of course change the position. Let's put it on position seven. Um, and this is how clefs work, and it's really how pretty much most of your neum combinations are going to work. This is a good time to talk about this. If you if you try to select everything up here, you might get everything. 
so that if you want to just select a Noom, the simplest way is to actually click in the middle of the staff. Even if you don't think that you're really clicking on the Noom, you will. You'll get it uh, if you click in the middle of the staff. Let's put this down where it was, 5 comma capital D. Um, now let's look at a couple different ways that we can do Nooms. So first we, we can do two Nooms side by side, one, one. Well, that of course doesn't look very good. Uh, so let's go back to that. We're going to put a space in between. There's a space. Or we could put maybe two spaces. Yeah, I think that looks better. So that is the, the universal uh, space. You can put these little spacers anywhere you want. You can put as many as you want. Um, you can put those and you can adjust the spacing of your of your Noom groups as you go. Let's look at a couple different other things that you can do. So this is a simple puncta. Um, let's add a D after it to make it a diamond. Okay, there's a diamond. Uh, let's put it on five. Put it up here. There we go. Um, let's make it a virga. Add a lowercase v. Boom, there's a v. So five v, four v, three v. You get the idea. Um, let's look at dots. So five. There's five. And here's five dot. Four dot. Three dot, and you know that the you notice that the dots avoid um, the ledger lines. Let's look at the epicema, five e, four e, three e, and etc. And then finally the ictus, five i, four i, three d for diamond with an i. Uh, there's a couple different varieties you can do. You can also combine. You can have a period with an I, uh, and then the ictus always goes at the end. It always goes after the period. So those are those are the those are the basic forms. Um, let's look at some more complex num forms. So if you have, um, we could call the call these ligatures. Um, so let's look at let's look at the simplest, the the two note podatus um, the, of the interval of a second. So this is from the 1 to the 2. So what you do is you enter the reference pitch first, which is the lowest pitch in the group. So this starts on a 1 and goes up, so it's a 1, 2. 2, comma, 1, 2. 3, comma, 1, 2. 4, comma, 1, 2, etc. Goes all the way up to, you know, 8, comma, 1, 2. You can do that. 9, comma, 1, 2. Yeah, you can do that. Adds a ledger line. So that's simple. Now we could go 1, comma, 1, 3. 2 comma 1 3 oops 2 comma 1 3 3 comma 1 3 you get the idea so uh, what about what about the uh, a simple form that descends from the 2 to the 1 1 comma 2 1 you notice ends up on the 1 2 comma 2 1 ends up on the 2 3 comma 2 1 ends up on the 3 okay 4 comma 3 1 ends up on the 4 2 comma 4 1 ends up on the 2, and etc. So the, the number before the comma indicates the lowest pitch, which I'm calling here the reference pitch. There are all sorts of num forms here, which you can look at in the documentation. And I've pretty much added every form I can think of. 1, 2, 1, uh, 2, comma, 2, 1, 2, 3, comma, 2, 3, 1. Um, there's a bunch of different forms. There's a lot of different ways that you can do things. Um, now, to these, you can add some some modifiers. So one comma one two, and then one comma one q two adds the quilisma. Um, the 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 quilisma can also be noted as its own note anywhere. So three and 3q. And by the way, this will come in handy later because this will allow you to combine with other num forms. You can add the quilisma to other things easily. Let's talk about the liquiescent. 1 comma 1 2 1 comma 1 2 small l adds the liquiescent. 1 comma 3 1 1 comma 3 1 l adds the liquiescent. And again, pretty much anywhere that you would find a liquiescent, you can add a lowercase l after that number, and it'll appear there. 
Now we've talked about the basic dot that comes after the simple punctum, but of course, um, of course, you can add dots in lots of places. So, <clears throat> what about if we had one comma one three, and we wanted to add a dot after this one comma one four? We wanted to add a dot after it. Well, here's the way that we would do that. We're going to go to the end of this, and we're going to add on. We're going to add on a period. Now, I'm going to use a slash between characters here, or between groups. The slash isn't necessary always, but it can be really helpful to delineate things. So we're going to add a slash to kind of break this up visually for us. And we're going to, we're going to add a dot on the space that we want. So this is one, two, three, four. We're going to add a dot on four, so period four. Um, and so you see that, <clears throat> by default, the dot is too close to the num. So what we're going to do is we can add a little spacer. You say, why did you put the dot so close to the num? Well, there are times where you actually want the dot to not take up a lot of extra space, so that's the reason. So you can put, you can put dots um, anywhere you want. These dots are also zero width. So let's say 2, 1, 3. Let's say we want to put dots in both of these. So we're going to add a slash. We're going to add a little space. And then we're going to go period 2, period 4 and it'll add it in both places. That's adding the dot. Now we added the the epicema on simple stuff. Um, we can also add the epicema uh, in the middle of any two num group. 4e1 is going to add the epicema here, okay? Because the epicema is coming on this note, so that's where we put it. But what about if we want to put the epicema on something that's more complicated? like something like 131, and we want to add an epicema, ep, uh, an epicema above that. Well, let's go to the start of it, and we're going to actually add this at the beginning. We're going to use this designator Y to say where should it go. It's going to go in, in right here in location number 4, this space. So 4 comma. Now the question is, how big do we want the epicema to be? 1 neum's worth? 2? or 3, in this case, 3. We'll add a slash to delineate it. You see, when we do that, it places the epicema kind of at the beginning of the num, and it spans however many uh, num locations you want. Next, let's talk about the ictus. Let's say that we had uh, this, this guy here. We can put the ictus at the end, um, but it actually can get pretty complicated, so why don't we um, rather than rather than natively adding the ictus to it, because there are too many combinations to do that, let's go ahead and place it where we want it to be. So the ictus is going to be underneath this guy. Now here's a little difference. The ictus is going to actually be, we're going to put the location in based on the location of the note that gets the ictus. So the ictus is going to belong to a note at, at, at space number 2. So we're going to go I2. When we do that, you see the ictus is placed below the note that is on location 2. All right, let's talk about flats. You can put a flat in any location, and you would put the flat before it. So uh, the flat would be entered as B, which, you know, looks like a flat, I guess, and 4. Let's add a little slash to delineate it. Now, you can see by default here, again, the flat is too close to the num. That's by design, because there's times where we might want it, so let's just add a little space. Now that's exactly the way we want it. You can also do this uh, with, uh, with naturals, which are a little lesser used, but uh, still, still possible uh, in the new Salem notation. Uh, the N, capital N, and also uh, capital S for sharp. So those are possible as well. Less common, but possible. Now when it comes to, to num groups, there's a lot, of, a lot of different ways that you can do num groups, and I'm going to show some examples in the next video where I'm going to walk through and I'm going to replicate something. But just know that you can place any number of num groupings together. Let's replace this one here. Uh, and let's say that we want, uh, we want a virga on 4, so 4v, four okay? Uh, and then we're going to have uh, a descending uh, descending diamonds or, or rhombuses. Um, let's add a little space and uh, we don't have to put all these slashes but I like to do it. Um, then let's put um, diamond on three 
and a diamond on two and a diamond on one. See, so when you do that, this is all now one group. It all belongs together. Its own spacing doesn't change. But within that group, you can see that I have a lot of different options. Let's put an ictus on that second one. Let's go like that. And there's an ictus. Let's put an ictus on the next one too. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can group nooms together. Um, the only caution I have is that um, sometimes a neum can result in a pretty long entry in the Lyric popover, and so that's a time where you may wish to break that neum up into multiple syllables. Uh, finally, let's talk about the, uh, the kustos. So that would come at the end. So shift L up, shift up, alt or option down. Now the kustos is entered just the same as anything else. Let's say five comma lowercase c. And we'll talk uh, next about how to navigate those things into place, but that's how you, that's how you enter them. Um, then the last thing I'm going to talk about is this other category of different nooms that are not quite as commonly known, but still, still possible. This would be puncta that are hollow. So we're going to, like instead of six, let's go six comma h. Five, or five comma h, and you see that it actually, uh, it actually removes the staff line. Um, you can do the same thing uh, with diamond note heads. You can make them open like that. Uh, the only thing with linea puncta is that you're clicking on it and it's selected, but it doesn't look like it. I'm clicking here, but it's not turning orange. That can be a little discombobulating, but you just have to acclimate to it. You can also place place bars around them, the kavum. So we can do that. Um, you can also place um, you can place kavum around regular regular uh, puncta. Just use n with a bar. Um, and then the final one for this is you can make all of these to be zero width. What that means is that you could you could have a um, you could have a, these puncta going, and you could have other notes if these are reciting tones. So let's go, uh, let's go six comma h, and we're going to make it be a zero, and then we're going to put a note underneath it. Let's say three, two, one. You get the idea. So this is like a reciting tone, and uh, any of these puncta. Um, that I just showed you, except for the diamond, can be entered as zero width. Then let's look at accents. So you can place an accent above the staff, um, above the final neum uh, in any syllable like this. You're simply going to use the straight brackets, and then you have a couple different options. You can do lowercase l for a left accent. You can do uh, lowercase r for a right accent. Uh, you can do lowercase u for a, an, a, an upwards half circle, d for a downwards half circle, or you can do lowercase o for a full circle. And the final thing is um, if you have these series of, of, of puncta entries, um, you can add before them you can add brackets before them that span above the top of various widths. I think you can do up to three, uh, and you're going to use the curly right bracket. Let's go three of them, and you'll see that that spans then this distance. And then let's add an A, uh, which will make an accent above that. Those are the basic entries. Oh, the last thing I want to talk about is adding bar lines. How do you add a bar line? because it can be a bit fiddly, especially if you can't see these notes. The easiest way to do it, and it's important that your rhythmic grid is set to quarter notes, the easiest way to do it is to select uh, one of these guys, um, and you want to go into Note Input, Shift N, and then just advance the cursor one spot. Now you can put in your bar line using Shift B. Um, and so this that's really kind of the easiest way to put in bar lines. Um, that interact with your um, that interact with your nooms and your syllables. And then, of course, at the end you can have you can have a final bar line, uh, whatever you wish. 
Uh, so let's go like this, shift N over one, shift B, double pipe and enter. Um, and of course, again, all these things, we'll talk about spacing in a minute, but all these things will need to be spaced accordingly. So that's a basic overview of the entries. Uh, next, let's, let's talk about the spacing. So how do you want to do, um, how do you want to do spacing? Well, um, first you want to apply an offset. Um, uh, click on these, um, control shift A or command shift A, and you want to make sure this offset property is ticked for all of these. You want these all to have an offset so that it doesn't change your spacing later. Uh, now what I would do, of course, this is, this is absolutely meaningless gibberish at the moment, um, but the first thing I would do is I would switch to note spacing, and I would do the big changes that I wish to do first, uh, whatever that looked like. Big, um, you know, big, big picture ideas. And I would get things generally the way I wanted them. Um, you could, at the end, if you wished, you can add an invisible bar line if you have a system break and that'll allow you um, that'll allow you to let me show you what I mean by that let's add a system break in a, in a very random spot shift s you see when you switch to um, uh, to note spacing you don't currently have a spot here to adjust so and by the way these are you know these are these are still off you have to do these down appropriately um, uh, you don't have a space to adjust, so what you want to do is you can go here to the beginning. You can go Shift B, and you can add a colon and enter. And this creates an invisible bar line, because if you remember in bar lines and engraving options, we set our dash length to zero. So this is a dashed bar line with a dash length of zero. And now, now I can adjust this guy here. So I would get things the way I wanted generally here, and again, I'm sorry to all you chant experts for this absolute gibberish. Um, then, this is where the magic of Dorico really kicks in. First, I'm going to space my lyrics. Um, I'm going to... I've got my arrows I can move, and I can also go up or down to select different things. I'm going to use Option left and right. Um, or Alt. I keep going back and forth because I work between PC and Mac all the time. So let's go, oh, we'll stick on PC. Alt, left and right. Control, Alt, left and right for big jumps. And Control, Shift, Alt, left and right for little spaces. So let's put it over here. And uh, I'm just going to kind of generally put things like I might want them. Again, if I were to move everything over, this would be a candidate for note spacing, as you can see. But let's let's not worry about that. This is just a demonstration have things there the way I want them aligned. Uh, no, not quite. And uh, let's line this guy up here. Um, now, in chant notation, the, uh, the beginning of the neum needs to align with the vowel. That's important. Also, the hyphens, uh, the hyphens are, need to be over kind of to the left. They need to really kind of look like they attach to the syllable that comes before them. So I grab this guy and I'll just move him over like this and align this to the A. So that is the basic idea that allows you to align your nooms uh, however you want them to be. In the next video, I will do, I'll, I'll recreate a portion of a more elaborate chant to show you uh, all the power of it. Thanks.